did a news release um, about, I think, two days ago announcing the data. And so just to walk you through the experiment, we took uh, rat neurons from embryos and we exposed them to various concentrations of DMT. This is vehicle. So no DMT, just the um, substance that was used to deliver, uh, solubilize the drug. And these are larger concentrations and going down to smaller concentrations. And at 30 nanomolars, we saw a 40% increase uh, compared to vehicle. And to show you the stunning difference in, in the neurons, we took a vehicle neuron, meaning a neuron that was not exposed to DMT. And then we've shown here two separate, this is a neuron you're looking at after exposure to DMT. And you can see just the number of, um, of these spines, these, and then processes, which is the dendritic spines, the difference between the 30 nanomolar exposure compared to vehicle. So we've seen the 40% increase. The second 30 nanomolars is very, very low below the 0.1 nano uh, um, milligrams per kilogram. So to I, I've had a few colleagues call me after they read this news release and they said, you know, it, we're not scientists and they thought maybe it was a bit too complex. And I, I just said, look, think about the reverse. What if Algernon stepped into this space, we did this experiment and we found that the neurons that receive DMT look the same as vehicle. That would mean that in our experiment, we couldn't recreate this growth, this activity. That would be bad news. So we've announced we can see that 40% increase. We validated that study. The second thing that we found was a sub-psychedelic dose showed the best performance. And that's key again, because if it was only a psychedelic dose, I think that we would uh, we would be thinking about uh, our program and, and how would that program uh, survive.